What's up, everybody? This is Alex Christopher with The Duran, and I'm here with Alexander McCurse, Editor-in-Chief of The Duran, and today we're going to be talking about Tommy Robinson and the protests that are breaking out worldwide. So, Alexander, a couple of days ago, we did a, a video on Tommy Robinson and what happened to Tommy Robinson uh, being taken to, to prison for reporting on, um, uh, on a grooming gang trial that was taking place in Leeds. There was a media blackout imposed by the UK government. Um, so that no one reported on Tommy Robinson. And the story, as you predicted in the last video, has not died down. If anything, it has uh, taken on a life of its own, um, especially on social media, given the fact that many mainstream media channels have not been allowed to report on uh, what happened to Tommy Robinson. In other words, it was a complete media blackout. So, Alexander, we now have Tel Aviv protests breaking out. We have Australia protests breaking out. We have protests in the Netherlands. Why are, these why are people in these countries protesting what happened to Tommy Robinson? And will these protests that are now starting to break out across the globe affect the UK's handling of the Tommy Robinson arrest? Right, let's, let's deal with the first question. I mean, firstly, I think that there is no doubt at all that more and more people are becoming increasingly concerned that they're living in a controlled media space where things happen and they're not reported about. And I think people are getting very concerned about this. They see what's happened to Julian Assange. We mentioned him in our last program. They see what's happened to Tommy Robinson. They're wondering now what is going on whether they're being told the truth about things, they're becoming suspicious, and they're becoming frightened. There is also the underlying issue, which is what he talks about, which is this uh, issue of uh, interrelationships between cultures and immigration and migration and the way many, many people around Europe feel that they're not being listened to by the authorities on this issue either. So this arrest has caused the perfect storm. It's brought all of these various concerns together and it is leading, as we said, as we talked about in that other program, to all sorts of issues coming to the fore. And it's not at all surprising uh, uh, and no one should be surprised about it. I should say that about Tommy Robinson himself, we now know an awful lot more about what happened than we did during our last program. I mean, he has now apparently pleaded guilty to contempt of court, and he's been sentenced, as we talk, touched on in that other program, uh, um, uh, for 13 months imprisonment um, because he pleaded guilty to contempt of court. It seems that as part of his face uh, streaming, as he, he's broadcasting outside this building, he did discuss certain things that were going on inside it which uh, uh, was construed as a possible contempt of court. I I'm not going to discuss the legalities of that because I think that would be dangerous for us to do. We don't know enough, and I don't think we should interfere I I in legal processes in that way. Uh, but it has also turned out that there were, in fact, legal restrictions placed on reporting. And uh, uh, now it has emerged that one newspaper, The Independent, challenged them and they have to some extent been lifted. So the fact that the authorities, the legal authorities uh, possibly, tried to control this story, um, I think we have seen that instead of controlling it and closing it down, they made a huge mistake and they have intensified all the concern that there was about it. Why, why would... Is it common practice, Alexander, in the UK when there's a controversial trial to, to place such restrictions? I mean, it, 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 would, it would be the, 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 the analogy would be like during the O.J. Simpson trial to have placed a media blackout, where I think in the U.S. it's the exact opposite when it's a big case or a controversial case. I mean, the media is swarming everywhere. Is, is this common practice in the UK? It's not common at all. Quite the opposite. I mean, it's very uncommon. The whole idea is the trials should happen in open court, journalists attend them, and they report on what happens. And that's always been considered to be a necessary part of due process, because it means that if trials are reported properly and openly, then 
if anything goes wrong during those trials, there is the protection that people know about it and it's not being concealed. So the answer to your question is it's extremely unusual. Now, it is said that there are certain features of this particular trial uh, about this particular case that made it necessary to impose these reporting restrictions. I have to tell you, I don't fully know what those are. And we have this strange situation when reporting restrictions are imposed that we don't know what the reasons are because that in itself is then a secret. But um, I'm not sure that it was a, a wise or correct thing to do in this case. And I think that the result of it has been to create these worldwide protests that you were talking about. Are these protests going to uh, continue at the pace that they're, they're going at right now? And, and if they do continue and strengthen, uh, will this be enough to, to pressure the, the UK government into backtracking a little on the heavy hand that it imposed on, uh, on Tommy Robinson? Can I just say, there's already been a certain backtrack in that, as I said, after the Independent, the newspaper, appealed the gagging order, uh, it, it was to, at least to some extent lifted. I think the British authorities need to look at this very carefully and ask themselves some very serious questions about the way this whole thing has been handled and whether it has done uh, 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 benefited anybody at all uh, uh, and whether their treatment of Tommy Robinson hasn't in fact made a, a, an issue when in fact letting this trial proceed in, in an open way might not have been better and fairer to all the people concerned. I say that, of course, we have to be careful because we don't know all the facts, but I think that um, imposing blanket bans on reporting trials, especially in some ways sensitive trials, is a dangerous thing. And um, I, I think that it is inevitably going to provoke suspicion and concern and it has done so in a big way in this case. Now that the, the independent uh, won um, their dispute with the government in order to report on this, are we going to be seeing the, the really big players in UK mainstream media start picking up this story, i.e. the BBC, Sky News, etc.? Or will they um, just kind of not even touch what's going on with Tommy Robinson out of ideological and... And I would like to say, uh, you know, maybe uh, because they're so connected to the to the UK deep state, so they just may say, OK, we're going to do you guys a favor and we're not going to really touch uh, this Tommy Robinson uh, case. Well, I, I think you need to look for the answer to that question to the newspaper which challenged the gag, which was The Independent. Now, The Independent, as its name implies, though it is part of the mainstream media, is in some ways very much at the fringe marginal edge of the ma mainstream media. We're not talking about the Times or the Guardian or the Daily Telegraph or the Financial Times. And we're certainly not talking about the BBC. So I personally do not think that those big media organs are going to start uh, um, uh, publicizing the details of this case to any great extent whether of the case in Leeds or of the Tommy Robinson case. I am sure that they're not going to. And I am sure that if no gagging orders existed, they would probably not do so either, because they have an ideological antipathy to what Tommy Robinson stands for and is. And, well, that's their view, but that isn't, doesn't justify, to my mind, not reporting a story when there is a story. And I think also, uh, um, as you correctly said, this is, the, this is the loop that exists now. They all work basically in concert with each other, even if they all pretend that they're in competition with each other, which in reality they are not. And I think the people know that as well. The public knows that they're uh, in cahoots with each other. But Alexander, um, getting, getting out your crystal ball. If you had to make a prediction, where do you see uh, Tommy Robinson's uh, fate? 
Well, I, I think he will spend some time in prison. I, I think there's been, as we discussed in our previous programme, concerns about his safety. I think the British authorities will be very careful to make sure that he is safe. So I would be very surprised if anything happened to him, especially after all these protests that have been going on around the world. I think it would compound massively what is already an embarrassing episode if something went wrong to him. So I think he will stay some time in prison. I don't think, I, I expect, my guess is, it will not be the full 13 months. I think they'll find some way to get him out sooner than that. And um, I hope, I think they hope, I should say, that they, I think they hope that that will be the end of this story. It might be the end of the Tommy Robinson story. It will not be the end of the underlying problem. Because, of course, if you try and sweep things under the carpet and try not to report them properly, then that inevitably is going to make people ask questions and it is going to lead to the sort of protests that we have seen. Uh, finally, Alexander, it's, is this going to be the end of the Theresa May story? Well, we'll see. I don't know. Uh, I, I, I have to say, Theresa May has been around longer than I had ever expected in some respects. Um, I, I think that she is an unpopular, discredited prime minister presiding over an unpopular and discredited government. It is very weak, uh, and yet it seems to go on. It's a most peculiar thing. It's like the sort of indestructible monster that you see in some a zombie uh, <laughs> monster that you see in some American horror films. It, it, it's basically undead, and yet it somehow shambles on creating destruction in its midst. I, I, I have to say that I have never in my time in li of living in Britain felt more uh, a, a, a greater atmosphere of political repression. And I use those words, uh, you know, very, very calculatedly, very advisedly than I have felt now under her government. And partly I suspect that is because it is such a weak government. It doesn't know how to control things or to, how to act with judgment, how to restrain forces that need to be restrained. And uh, maybe that's one reason why it continues, because it, it serves the interests of some people to have a weak government there that doesn't control them fully. Well, maybe it's, uh, you know, the whole Tommy Robinson thing. Sometimes it's these little things that a uh, government doesn't expect to cause uh you know, the, the fall of that government. And, and so Tommy Robinson may have been that final straw that, that you know, breaks the back. Uh, it's possible. I don't actually think so in this particular case, because to be frank, um, I, I don't think he has much support, and that's putting it mildly, within the British political elite, which, which is where, if Theresa May loses confidence, that is where it's going to happen. Uh, but, but having said that, mm -hmm. You're absolutely right. It is the small things that can sometimes bring a whole thing crashing down. And uh, what I don't think is going to happen is this thing escalates. If protests start to become bigger, if we see many more people turning outside 10 Downing Street, if we see people bringing it up on discussion programs on the BBC, which is, you know, one can only control that to a certain extent because those are live. Uh, if things like that start to happen, then possibly we can start to see the whole edifice of the, of the Theresa May government uh, uh, start to fall apart. But uh, my own guess is that it will be something else. And uh, probably what one needs to look at there is something that happens in which uh, it, it, it's traced back more openly to her. The Skripal affair is a possibility. Hmm. Well, I'm, I'm sure that the, the May government is now trying to contain uh, any more fallout from the Tommy Robinson uh, debacle, which is what this really is. Um, we'll be following this, this story as it unfolds, and it is unfolding on a daily basis. Alexander Mercurius, editor-in-chief of the Duran, thank you again for joining us and explaining what's going on uh, with the, the Tommy Robinson uh, story which is an interesting story that is really just lighting up the, the internet, the alternative media space, the social media space, uh, and the YouTube uh, news space.
Thank you very much, everybody, for watching uh, News and Review. I'm Alex Christoforo with The Duran. I'm with Alexander Mercurius, Editor-in-Chief of The Duran. Remember to click that red subscribe button down below. Also, click that notification bell to get notifications every time we push out a new video. Go to drnshop.com, pick up a shirt, pick up a retro poster, support The Duran. You help keep us going. Take care, everybody. Till next time.